Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Today we'll be testing the Ziyun Smooth Q2 gimbal. And if you haven't seen my first part the unboxing video, you can check it by the link in the upper right corner or by the link in the description. But if you just want to go ahead and see the testing, you're in the right place. So let's get started. And today we'll be going through the main functions of this gimbal. I want to just show you how it works. You decide whether you like it or not, and if you want to buy it or not. Just a quick recap, if you haven't seen my other video where I was unboxing this gimbal, this is a gimbal from the premium segment. It is not the most expensive one, but it definitely feels high quality. Very well built. It's all made out of machined anodized aluminum. There's almost no plastic parts at all, except maybe for the joystick. Everything else is made from the anodized aluminum and it's all machined perfectly. So it does really feel premium quality. Also, if you would like, you can go ahead and check out the other video about FuTech Vlog Pocket 2 smartphone gimbal. And actually, I do prefer that gimbal over this one, but it doesn't have that premium look and it's almost entirely made out of plastic. So you don't get that feel. On another hand, it's much lighter and it's cheaper as well. But anyway, if you want to go ahead and check it out, I'll leave a link in the description and also put a link in the upper right corner. So you're welcome to go ahead and check it out. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and start the gimbal, equip the gimbal with a smartphone, and let's go ahead and start shooting and testing it. So first of all, let's go ahead and attach the phone holder to the gimbal bracket. Make sure it's perfectly aligned and it's not crooked. Then go ahead and close this red latch until it's all flash. This will make sure that the phone's gonna be firmly attached to the gimbal and it's not gonna fall out. All right, there we go, it's all good. Now let's go ahead and turn it on and voila. It's all working. So let's go ahead and do some shooting and we're going to see how it actually works. First of all, let's go ahead and do a 360 rotation and see how it's going to handle it. As you can see from the footage at the bottom right corner, the filming is butter smooth. There is no shaking at all. And I can go ahead and turn 360 and get a butter smooth footage. Let's go ahead and do it one more time counterclockwise. And the result is exactly the same. There is no shaking. And we get in a cinematic smooth video. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of walking and see how it's going to handle steps at the normal pace. As you see, the footage is still very smooth. There is no shaking. There is no bumps. Everything looks very cinematic. And you can actually get really nice videos with this gimbal. Let's go ahead and try to do it again. I have enabled the follow mode and I'm just going to face it more to the ground and see how it's going to work. As you can see, there is no shaking either. Very nice footage. The range of movement for this gimbal is amazing. Let's go ahead and check out the tilt. The tilt range of this gimbal is 305 degrees, which is really a lot. I haven't seen other gimbals that have the same tilt range. It's very good. Like for example, my other gimbal, Fuyu Tech Vlog Pocket 2, only has a 165 degree tilt range. So having a 305 degree tilt range on this gimbal is really cool. And as you can see, you can do a lot of cool shots with it. Also, the pan wrench is 360 degrees, so it will be rotating constantly like on a professional DSLR camera gimbal. So this is very good. Also, like I mentioned, my FuTech Vlog Pocket 2 only has a 330 degree range. The roll wrench is also quite impressive. It's 265 degrees, which allows you to get some cool incline shots. If you enable the pan following mode or the PF mode, the phone camera pans left and right following the movement of the stabilizer handle while the tilt and roll axis motors are locked. This is a default mode of this gimbal and this is the most commonly used mode of this gimbal as well. If you enable the lock mode, the three motors are all locked and the phone is fixed at a certain angle, which means you can rotate your hand in different directions, but the phone's still gonna be facing only one direction. 
This is good when you're trying to fix on one subject and you don't want to miss it. As you can see, I'm turning my hand into different directions, but the phone is still and it's still shooting only in one direction. If you enable the point of view mode or the POV mode, all three motors will follow the movement of the stabilizer handle, which means the camera will be pointing to the direction where you give the point in your hand. I find this is one of the most useful modes of this gimbal and I do like it very much because it lets you make some great footages and the camera is falling to the direction of my hand and it lets you choose the subject real easy. And another cool mode is called the vortex mode. The tilt axis rotates 90 degrees and revolves following the movement of the stabilizer handle and you can make some pretty cool footage as you can see. You might have noticed that sometimes one of the knuckles of this gimbal gets in the picture. It all depends on your camera angle if you're shooting on a wide angle or just a standard angle. But if you want to get rid of that knuckle in the picture, you just gotta press the record button three times quickly and then it's just gonna rotate the gimbal in such a way that this knuckle is not gonna be in the picture. All right, now let's go ahead and complicate our test a little bit and do some running test. As you can see, the running test is pretty good still. I see a little bit of bumps on the running test, but they are minor and the footage still looks buttery smooth. Let's go ahead and try it one more time. Now let's do the same run, but without the gimbal, just to see the difference. And here how it looks side by side. All right, let's do it one more time from a different direction. And again, the same run, but without the gimbal. And here how it looks just for comparison. Check out the difference. Let's take it one step further and step up on a large stump, see how it's going to be able to handle it. And as you can see, it can handle it no problem. It's very smooth. There is no shaking and I'm actually surprised there is no bump at all. Now, this is going to be one of our toughest tests for this gimbal, jumping over the stump. And as you can see, it can handle it no problem as well. Let's see how it's going to look without the gimbal. And again, here is side by side. Let's go ahead and do another test popular for those doing auto reviews. We're going to do a 360 around the vehicle to get a cinematic footage that you can use in your video. And now let's go ahead and do probably one of the most demanding tests for this gimbal. So we're going to be testing it on a dirt road in the back country. And as you can see, the road is not smooth. It's not asphalt and it's not smooth at all. And you will see that there is also washing board on these roads. And if you ever driven on these roads, you know how it feels. And check out how this gimbal can handle it.
All right, so let's go ahead and quickly recap and talk about some pros and cons of this gimbal. So what I can say about this gimbal, one of the pros is the premium build quality. You can definitely feel like it's built out of good materials and the machine work is done really great. So it definitely feels premium quality with machined anodized aluminum material. It also has a good range of movement and it is comparable to actual DSLR level gimbals. It's got a 360 pan rotation, 265 degrees roll range and 305 degrees tilt range, which is really a lot for the smartphone gimbal. It also has five different modes, so you can choose the mode that you want to be shooting. You can either use lock mode, follow mode, POV mode, or the vortex mode, which I find personally is not very useful, but you can get some pretty cool footage with it. And as you have seen, the results of the stabilization is excellent, so I will give it 5 out of 5. You pretty much get the best stabilization possible. There is no shaking or bumps even at the most demanding tasks, such as running or jumping, so I'll give it an A for this. And the price is also very decent. It's not the cheapest gimbal you can get, but it's not the most expensive one. And for the stuff that you get in, it's really worth it. And for the cons, the major disadvantage that I find of this gimbal is that the knuckle gets in the way on some cameras. So if you decide to shoot on a wide angle camera, the knuckle is going to be in the way. And even like I showed, you can incline the gimbal and the knuckle is going to get out of the way. Still on the very wide angle cameras, you're going to get that knuckle in the shot which will make the footage pretty much unusable unless you want to crop it. Also, the mounting bracket is very small and you can use the phone with a case on it. So you're going to have to remove the case before you can use it. And I find that the phone has to be pretty slim. The actual bracket opens up pretty wide, but the thickness of the phone will determine if you can use it or not. But nowadays, most phones are pretty slim, so you should be okay with that. But just keep in mind, you're going to have to remove the case before you can use this gimbal. Also, the gimbal needs to be balanced before you can use it. On some similar gimbals, you don't need to balance it. You just have to eyeball it and it will work no problem. In this gimbal, you actually have to balance it before you use it. You can still use it without balancing, but the battery will drain much quicker and it won't last you very long because it's going to be working much harder. So this is another disadvantage of this gimbal. Another thing, there is no locks on the motor, so if you decide to carry it, make sure you carry it in the box where the motors are not moving, because if you carry it in the bag, it might wreck the motors, and then the gimbal is going to be junk. Unlike some other gimbals where there is locks for the motors, this one doesn't have that. Also, it doesn't include any carry bag, which I think would be great, but they didn't include the carry bag with this gimbal. Also, there is no tripod included, so you have to buy the tripod separately if you want to use it with a tripod, and without the tripod, it's really hard to balance it because it's going to tip. It doesn't have enough surface to stand. So you're going to need to get another tripod for $10, $15. Unlike other gimbals, they do include the tripod with the gimbal. So you don't have to buy it separately. So that's another con for this one. And another minor con that I find is it is a bit heavier for the smartphone gimbal. It weighs 380 grams without the battery. So if you're shooting for a very long time with it, it might become an issue. And especially that other gimbals are much lighter. For example, the FuTech Vlog Pocket 2 that I have reviewed recently, it's about 270 grams, so much, much lighter, 200 grams lighter. But this is what you get because of the high quality build materials. It gives it much more premium feel because of this aluminum materials. And of course, aluminum is heavier than plastic, so you're going to get a heavier gimbal. So this is a trade-off for the premium quality. So yeah, this is it, guys. This is it for today. I hope you find this video helpful and interesting. Let me know in the comment section below if you like this gimbal. And if you decide to go for it, or if you like some other gimbals, let me know which gimbal you're using or which one you're thinking of getting. And also, if you want to go ahead and check out the unboxing video, you can follow through the link in the description. Also, if you find this video helpful, support with your like, subscribe to the channel for more interesting reviews and cool videos. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. And I hope you have a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye.